Number 10. Do not cover. Do not covet. You forgot, but I know you know. <laughs> you see, and the fifth commandment, he says, number one, you have to obey your parents because this glorifies God. Imagine God himself, you know, saying, you have to do it because whenever you obey your parents, it gives me glory. And then number two, in that particular chapter of Exodus, there's a promise. Says if you obey your Work life must be lived under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Your family life must be lived under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. All of life, you know, Christ must rule every area of your life. You know, you remember, there's a time I talked about, you know, consultants. A consultant is somebody you invite in your life. Now let's, let, let's, let me just give a typical example. When I need you know things that do with cameras and whatever, you know, I call Emmanuel. Because I have I don't know, you know, about it. So in that particular area I will consult him because he has to advise me on what he to do. But you know, even if I am ignorant in this particular area and he has to consult I have to consult him so he is my consultant in, in that particular area but he is not lord over my life so a consultant can advise you in one area of your life but he does and rule over your life. And the, what is happening you know, in our lives is that you know, people have made Christ a consultant. So it, you know, like, like, we give you only certain areas of our lives but we do not give you certain other areas of our lives. You know Christ, the Bible says you know, in the beginning was God was the word and the word was God there is nothing that has made which has not been made by God he is the visible the, the, visible, the, the invisible image of God in whom in, in, in him dwells the fullness of God he is the one who sustains life he is the author and the finisher of our life and then Imagine making the author of your life a consultant. He doesn't call Eve first. But he calls. Adam. Adam. Where are you? Because you know. He would have, you know, called, you know, Eve because you know she's the one who But he doesn't call, you know, Eve. But he, he calls Adam. Adam, where are you? Adam, where how come that the devil has entered the house and you yes, allowed him to enter? Because your role is to disciple your wife. Your role is to protect your wife you know, from falsehood. But how, how did the devil enter your house? You are problematic. Number two. Very important. Wives. Submit your husbands. And husbands. Love. Mukunde. Your wives. Listen to this word. Love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Mukunde abagorevanyu nimu babere umururazi. That is Kirundi. <laughs> so in Kinyarwanda, what does umururazi? That is Kirundi. So, gushairi, gusharira. Yes. Wow. Umuru. <laughs> okay. So husband, you know love. And do not be harsh with them. You get the point. So now there it is actually there's an implication. 
there is, it is implied that sometimes you know wives will frustrate you they will they will they will you know Ill irritate you but th this is what and the bible says do not you know be harsh with them do not be harsh with them Colossians uh, chapter 3 we're reading from uh, verses 18 to 21 the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 18 to 21 the Bible says wives submit your husbands as is fitting wives submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord husbands love your wives and do not be harsh with them children obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Amen. Amen. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves you know, this morning. What a not deserved a privilege, Heavenly Father, to not only be saved from death, but also to be called you know, to serve you through the ministry of the gospel. There is something that we did not deserve. It is because of your grace, it is because of your mercy that we can stand in front of your people and speak on your behalf. And so this morning, Heavenly Father, I humble myself. I do recognize that I am such a weak preacher. I am powerless apart from your power. And so, Lord, I pray that you will help me. Help me deliver your word faithfully to your people. I pray that you will open our eyes so that we might be able to behold wonderful things that are in your word. I pray that you will make people's hearts you know, receptive of your word. That your word will transform our lives. That we will not go back you know, as we can. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, when you look at uh, these uh, particular verses that we've read, what we see is that you know uh, the apostle Paul is describing the distinguishing marks of uh, a Christ-centered uh, family. And actually, that is the main uh, the, the, the topic. That is the title of my message today. A Christ-centered family. And if you recall, you know, you know, back, you know, I think last year I've been talking about you, teaching about you the book of Colossians. And then the, even you know in the last conference, you know, choirs we talked about you know the major point of the book of Colossians. And I remember, you know, I've been talking about you know, the incomparability of Christ. Like Christ is supreme. Christ is incomparable. Like you can never have any blessing outside of Christ Jesus. And then what 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 the apostle Paul wants us you know, to learn in, the, in, in this particular passage. He wants us you know, to learn that all of life must believed under the lordship of Christ Jesus. 
the lordship of Christ Jesus. All of life must be believed under the lordship of Christ Jesus. Your private life has to be lived under the lordship of Jesus. Your Work life must be believed under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Your family life must be believed under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. All of life, you know, Christ must rule every area of your life. You know, you remember, there's a time I talked about, you know, consultants. A consultant is somebody you invite in your life. Now let's, let, let's, let me just give a typical example. When I need you know things that do with cameras and whatever, you know, I call Emmanuel. Because I have I don't know, you know, about it. So in that particular area I will consult him because he has to advise me on what to do. But you know, even if I am ignorant in this particular area and he has to consult I have to consult him so he is my consultant in, but in that particular area but he is not lord over my life so a consultant can advise you in one area of your life but he doesn't rule over your life. And they, what is happening you know, in our lives is that you know, people have made Christ a consultant. So a, you know, like, like, we give you only certain areas of our lives but we do not give you a certain other areas of our you lives. You know Christ, the Bible says, you know, in the beginning was God. Was the word. And the word was God. There is nothing that has made which has not been made by God. He is the visible, the, the, visible, the, the invisible image of God. In whom, in, 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 in him dwells the fullness of God. He is the one who sustains life. He is the author and the finisher of our lives. And then, imagine making the author of your life a consultant. He has to rule every area of life. And remember, you know, a family has been designed by God. It has been instituted, you know, by God Himself. A family is not a product of a culture or of a society. It is something that God Himself designed. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. There is God's blessing. Things upon any people if they follow God's blueprint for the family. If you don't follow the design of God that you are chasing away the blessings Glory to God. Yes, Hashem. Now, when the family is biblically strong, then the church is biblically strong. Then the society is biblically strong. And the nation is strong. But on the other hand, when the family is compromised, 
that the opposite of what I've mentioned here above will happen. That's why it is very important for you to listen to this message. You can never have a society without a family. You can never have a nation without a family. In order for a family, a society to exist, in order for a nation to exist it is because a man and a woman came in all together and were able you know, to give birth to children and then in the family the church is born in the family the society is born in the family the nation is born so imagine if you know the design of God because the family is compromised see what is happening you know to, uh, to the world and to us catastrophe and disaster will happen on this catastrophe now let me just uh, you know because of my time let me mention about you know a few things there. Number one, I want you know, to talk about you know a submissive wife. Listen to what he says. You know, verse 18 addresses uh, the submissive wife. It says wives submit to your husband as is fitting in the Lord. Now look at what it says, wives, it is in plural. So, that, refer, that refers to every Christian woman or wife. And the next word, it is actually in the active present. Submit. So, when, 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 when we talk about you know, present, sometimes you know, grammatically we say you know, present expresses something that is done routinely. Everyday. Yes, now when the Bible says, you know, women, you know, or wives, you know, submit to your husband, it's saying you have to submit to your husband every day. And then thirdly, you know, the word submit, you know, when it comes, you know, to modes, grammatically, it is an imperative imperative command it is a command so it is not like you know I will submit to my husband when I feel it or not no God has commanded that wives submit to your husband it is not an option whether you like it or not you have to submit you have to choose are you going to disobey God or are you going to follow your parents? And number two, what, why should we do it? Back you know to Ephesians chapter 5. You know, the, you know scholars you know, say that you know, Ephesians and uh, Colossians are actually uh, partner episodes. So you know they have a lot of similarities. And then he says, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, says you have to submit your husband because he's the head of your family. Because he is the head of your family. That is why you have to do it. And that is not something that you know man made up himself. It is something that the Lord established from the beginning. Glory to God. Yes, is the head of your family. The head of your husband, your, 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 the, of the wife. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we have certain women who want you not know, to be men in the house. And they are fighting, you know, the design of God. So, uh, let, me, let me ask you this question. Have you ever seen a body with the two heads? Yeah, me, I see, I've, I've seen it. What about you? Now, but what, what happens when we see a body with the two heads? No, no, we say it is an abnormality. It is abnormality. The design of God is that the man is the head of the house. And then number two, submit to your husband because look at that as, as is fitting in the Lord. 
as is fitting the Lord. Because you know, before you, you know, remember what I mentioned last time. Before you are your husbands, you are of the Lord. Before you are your husbands, you are of your Lord. You have to make sure that you know whatever you're doing, whatever you're thinking, whatever, however you're behaving, you know, you have to present it before the Lord before you present it to your husband. Because you are going to Glory to God. Yes, That is the point. So when he says as is fitting in the Lord, in now you see it it rises above culture. It is all about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You know, your submission to your husband reflects your submission to the Lord. How you submit to your husband tells us much about you know your submission to the Lord. See, let me just put it in this question. Tell me how you relate to your husband. Tell me how you submit to your husband. And then I will tell you how. You to the Lord. I will tell you how much you love God. Because how much you love God, it is expressed in how you submit your husband. But if you disobey your husband, if you disrespect your husband, and then you come to church and lie that I love the Lord, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. Your submission to your husband reflects your submission to the Lord. Very quickly, number two, verse 19, you know, is addressing, you know, to men. Now, the point number two is sacrificial husband. Verse 19 says, Husband, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Hello, man. Praise God. Yes, I Now he's talking about you know love. No, no, And we know there are you know a, a, a number of uh, type of loves uh, that you know. But imagine the kind of uh, uh, the kind of love uh, type of love is mentioning about. You know, in Greek, this word actually is called you know agape. It is called agape. agape. And what is he saying? He's saying that you have to love your wife unconditionally. You have to love your wife sacrificially. You have to treasure your wife. You have to prize her. You have to delight in her. That is the major point that he's talking about. Yeah, when we go back you know, to chapter 5 of Ephesians. He says that he who loves his wife loves himself. That's what the Bible says. He who loves his wife loves himself. If you hate your wife, you hate yourself. If you disrespect your wife, you disrespect yourself. Because you have become one body. And the Bible says, he who loves his wife loves himself. Loves himself. Glory to God. Yes, and sometimes you know challenges come in the house, and sometimes you know the first people to be blamed are women, but sometimes you realize you know it is the men. Why? Because it remember what happened in the garden of Eden. God you know, gave him the responsibility. As the head of the family. And one of you know of the, uh, the, the family is there to protect the wife. And then what happens when the devil comes? Tempts. If. Eva. 
he, the man is busy kandi umugabo yari yahuze he doesn't know what is happening and when God comes he doesn't call Eve first but he calls Adam where are you? because you know he would have you know, called you know, Eve because you know, she's the one who but he doesn't call you know, Eve but he, he calls Adam Adam where are you? Adam how come that the devil has entered the house and you allowed him to enter? Because your role is to disciple your wife. Your role is to protect your wife from falsehood. But how did the devil enter your house? You are problematic. You are Very important. Wives. Bagore, Submit to your husbands. And husbands. Love. Mukunde. Your wives. Listen to this word. Love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Mukunde abagore banyu ntimubabere umururazi. That is Kirundi. Yeah. <laughs> so in Kinyarwanda what does umururazi that is Kirundi? So Gushayi. Gusharira. Yes. Wow. Umuru <laughs> okay. So husband, you know love. And do not be harsh with them. You get the point. So now there it is actually there is an implication. There, there is it is implied that sometimes you know wives will flat, frustrate you. They will they will they will you know Ill irritate you. But this is what, and the Bible says, do not, you know, be harsh with them. Do not be harsh with them. You know, whenever you have two objects, like this is an example that I'm giving. Yeah? Whenever you have two objects, and they come moving, you know, closer to each other, they will always, you know, rub each other. And sometimes, and sometimes in the wrong way. And so, you know, God is saying, do not, you know, like let a small, uh, do not consider or let a small thing become a very big thing. So that you know, you end up, you end up, you know, shooting a mosquito with a machine gun. You get the point. Do you understand that? So you end up shooting. Do you see the mosquito? And then you end up shooting a mosquito no, with no, a machine gun. No, that it, it is a very small thing. And then you are widening it. And, it, it, and, and you're using it, you know, to, to destroy your family. No, no, no. Now remember that before you are your wife, you are of the Lord. And everything that you are doing, it is so that you know Christ may be exalted in your family. So that you know. Christ may be glorified in your family. So, don't be harsh with you. Glory to God. Yes, And number 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 three. An obedient child. An obedient child. Children. Let's raise our hands. But very many of us, we still have, you know, parents, we are children. Even if we are fathers and mothers, we still have, you know, those we have to serve. And then, you see, this is very important. Because we are living in a society where people don't like children. Specifically when you go to the Western people. Like people are preferring, you know, to have dogs in the place of children. Because how are they interpreting? You know, they are saying, you know, children are burdens. I better rear a dog. And God says, you know, children are blessings from above. And God has called you to bear image bearers and fill the world. And he says, you know, children, you have to obey your parents. Why? Because he says, this pleases the Lord. This glorifies you the Lord. So you remember in the book of Exodus. Exodus, you know, where, where do we find, you know, the uh, the Ten Commandments in, in, in the Bible? Can somebody remind me? 
in this in this area this area here this this first church so where do we find you know the uh, the, the ten commandments in the bible can somebody tell me the area the book and the chapter here i'm talking about you know this gentleman here um, you, you forgot eh? hey kuva so exodus chapter 20 chapter 20 okay that's where we get you know the yes chapter 20 and then what you know what is the fifth commandment what is the fifth commandment let me ask mothers mama 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 what is the fifth commandment hello hello the fifth commandment how old you buka no one remembers i think you just forgot but i know you know <laughs> <laughs> okay so it is honor your father and your mother so yes at least you may forget others but that one because but that you have to remember honor your father and your mother by the way what is the first command what is the first commandment let's go very quickly no other god number 2 no idol number 3 no misuse of god's holy name number 4 remember the sabbath to keep it holy number 5 honor your father and your mother number 6 no murder number 7 no adultery number 8 eh? no stealing number 9 eh? don't lie number 10 do not cover do not cover it you forgot but i know you know <laughs> <laughs> you see and the fifth commandment it says number one, you have to obey your parents because this glorifies god imagine god himself you know saying you have to do it because whenever you obey your parents it gives me glory and then number two, so in that particular chapter of exodus there's a promise so if you obey your parents you will live longer you will live longer like what, what, now what, what did he mean specifically because in, in in the book of exodus back in the old testament whenever a child disrespected you know uh, uh, the parents whenever a child you know disobeyed you know the parents there was a death penalty you have to die that was you know the penalty the death penalty in the old testament it, it is in the exodus chapter 21 verse uh, 17 if you disobeyed your parents the penalty was to die now when you die are you going to live longer no you're not going to live long because you've died but do you want blessings do you want blessings you have to obey your parents you have to obey your parents if you want to be blessed you have to obey your parents and then number two he talks about you know now when he says the children obey your parents he expects you parents you know to teach them about obedience the first teacher of his is of children is not in a Sunday school it's not in the school teacher your you parents you are the first teachers of your children and let me tell you something and i go and observe look at children who have been taught by their parents in the home wherever they go wherever they go they are different why because there is a way they have been brought up you know, in their families their parents you know, took you know, the responsibility are you teaching your children if you don't the world is going to do it the world is going to do it. glory to god is the watch correct because i'm following okay so you have the responsibility now 
Like you see, you go to the hands. You, you are going in the in Canada, in in US and wherever. We are going abroad to get kujaja hands. Where you know Canada. these nations are, are giving freedom, you know, to children. Aho aya mahanga yaha yugi sanzura ba. Like do whatever you want. See, I read one of the uh, news in in Canada. Na somnye ikime mukinya makuru muri Canada. Unga na garake. A child one morning. Ngo buche arabuga munda shaka kupu mukok. They decided I want. It was a man. He decided he wanted to no, be no, a girl. No, no, abara Hindu ega. Muki ingereza nti abara he abara she. No, he changed. Now he's no longer a he. He's a she. No, no, mama wewe ariba kigwa amita she. Now the mother forgot and called him a she. Yesterday he was already a she. Wangu te she. When he, he, the mother called her a she. Ari ukaja kada kurega mama wewe. He went away and Mama we arafungwa muri prison kubera kuko yisu mwana we shi umwana yibagiye The mother was arrested because the mother forgot to call him That is the by world the right we are going in. How no to etu? That's the world where we are heading so, to. So one of the, the 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 reasons why God gives us children. Impamvu rero impana nyamukuru iduhereza abana. Children ni umugishuka ku mana. Abana ni umugi Yeah, God doesn't give us children so that we may boast and you know Imbana ntagi duha abana kugira ngo twirare. He gives us children so that we may disciple them. Iduhereza abana kugira ngo tubigishe. For the glory of God. Kugicuba hero cy'Imana. Glory to God. Yesa shimwe cyane. So lastly, icyanyuma. Lastly, icyanyuma. What is the, the the last point? You know the sensitive father. Umu umu umubyeyi wumva. Tuke wumviriza wo. Wumviriza abana cyangwa se uri attentive. You know listen fathers do not provoke your children. Haravuga ngo base Let's they become you know discouraged. Glory to God. Yes, I You know how many of you like sometimes you know when your dad is, is coming into the house into the house. When you hear like you know he's coughing outside, you know wanting to enter that you put on your shoes and you run under the bed. It's like a lion is going to enter into the house. No, God is calling you. You have to be friends with your children. Oh yeah, Iman ni kuwa magalia kuwishuti na ba na ba. You have to play with your children. Ugomba kuchina na ba na ba. You have to take them out. Ugomba kuwa sohokan. You have to embrace them. Ugomba kuwishi. You have to appreciate them when they do good. Ugomba kuwa shimi ya mugiwa kuzeneza. And you have to discipline them when they do bad. Kandi ugomba kuwa cha ha mugiwa kuzeneza. So we are living in another world. Tulikuwa mungu. Where by parents you don't discipline their children. Aho abavzi ba tagi hana ba na ba. Ah. No, I can't beat my child. Lekare kare kasi nakuta mwana wange. It is not good. Na gari byiza. No, you are disobeying God. Oya ahubwo ntago uri kubaha Imana. Discipline your child. Chaha umwana wawe. When is young? Mugiha kiri muto. And will follow the ways of the Lord. Kanda zakomeza inzira z'Imana. You think you love your child by not disciplining him? Uri baza ngo ukunda abana bawe we mugiye utari kuraba chaha. You are killing him. Oka ahubwo uri kubica. That's the reality. Uko niko kuri. Wives submit your husbands. Bagore mugandukira bagore bawe. Husband love your wives. Abagabo mukunda bagore bawe. Children obey your parents. Bane mubaha bavyeyi banyu. Glory to God. Yes, I shame. Let me just read this. I can so make you know. From the song Kuva mu ndirimbo. By what uh, it is called Warren Buffett. Ni ndirimbo ya Warren Buffett. He said love is not a place not to come and go as we please. Urukundo sa hantu tugenda tukagenda nko tukagaruka ngo twifuza. It is a house we enter in. Ninzu twinjiramwo then commit to never leave ahubwo tukika tukifuza kutayivamwo so lock the door behind you no no ho nuinjira wugaru urugi nyuma yawe and throw away the keys hanyume ute urufunguzo work it out together mugende mubikorere hamwe and let it bring us you know to our knees hanyuma mureke bituzane love is a shelter urukundo numwuvuri numwivuri in a raging storm Love is peace in the middle of a war. Urukundo na mahoro mugihe chinhambara. And if we try to leave, mugihe duku bivengo makoto vamo. May God send His angels. Deka imana yoheza mareka ba. To guard the door. Mukugira ngo irinde guaru. No, love is not a fight. Eka urukundo sinhambara. But it is something worth to fight for. Ariko nikin huakagombi kuwanidira. Receive the word of God. Ngakishamboje man.